Welcome everyone to this very special Lynn Community Television production of A Conversation with Tom Coston, episode three. My name is Richard Coppinger. My co-host is my good friend, Joe Scanlon, and of course with us is our guest of honor, the Honorable Thomas B. Coston, Jr. Uh, Joe, Tom, we've had a great first two segments. Uh, Tom, you shared with us a lot of information, a lot of things that a lot of people didn't know about you, I think, yeah. also, yeah. and it's been very compelling. But, we Joe, wanna, where do we go from here? Well, we've still got more to do, and we've, 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 you've talked in the last segment about your relationship with the Kennedys, and President Kennedy in particular. Right. I, I think you also have had some other experiences with presidents in Lynn, and I believe in the 50s you had an experience with the Republican president who yes. came to Lynn quite a bit. Yes. A future Republican president, yes. actually. Yes. Uh, one was uh, with, uh, uh, what's his name now? You're... Yeah, president <laughs> Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Ronald Reagan. Well, see, I don't remember Republican presidents like you do. See. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he came to the yeah, GE here yeah. in Lynn for their well, annual. Well, he worked for GE because they had the uh, they had a program on 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 the uh, TV, and uh, he hosted the program. But what they would do, they would invite him to come back every spring and every fall to meet with the with managers at the GE. And in those days, we had twenty thousand workers of GE. We had them at the at the at the West Lynn plant, we had the Riverwoods plant and the Allerton Street plant, and so what they would do, they would uh, invite me uh, to, to to these dinners that they would have with the Hawthorne upstairs, and where they had a, 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 a nice big room, and uh, they wanted me to bring the greetings to the to the members of there and also to the to the guests, and eight times I introduced, uh, uh, I mean I brought the greetings of the city to to uh, to Ronald Reagan, and. Uh, in, in, uh, when he was elected, uh, when he was elected president, I was also uh, a national president, and I went to one of the uh, one of the presidential dinners, and uh, I was at the table of the uh, senator from Alaska, who was also uh, chairman of the Post Office Civil Service Committee. He invited me to be one of his guests, and uh, when the president started walking around the room, and he came to the, our table. He looked at me and he said, Tommy said, are you here tonight to introduce me? I said, not tonight, Mr. President. Maybe some other time, but not tonight. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, he was a great friend of, uh, of, of Tip O'Neill. And uh, 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 as, as I, was, I told you the story, but I'll probably tell you again, about uh, when I became national president to the second time, Tip O'Neill was, uh, was the uh, uh, Speaker of the House. And uh, I went to him and told him, Tip, I, I need a, a parking space up here someplace. He said, Tom, we'll take care of that. So he called, a, he called the captain of the guard uh, at, the, at the Capitol up to his office and said, make room for Tom Coston's car right next to mine. And so they did. And uh, I'd go in, and uh, they didn't know who the devil I was other than I had a low plate from Massachusetts, and I was right next to Tip O'Neill's, and I must be close to Tip, so it was very easy and very handy, to, very handy to me. But uh, well, I, I would like to, uh, I, I went twice to his, made, made sure, I went twice uh, every uh, 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 St. Patrick's Day, because the president would invite him over for dinner, and he and Tip uh, would try to give stories to one another. So he'd always come back and he'd give me the stories that the that Tip would tell him and the stories that he told Tip. It was a great, great I think, experience. I think we skipped over something which I thought was pretty impressive. You were head of the National Postmasters Association in the 60s. Yeah. And then you said the second time. Yeah. And the, when well, was you know, that? I, was, I was the first person in, in, in the organization ever to, ever to get reelected again. They, they brought me back. And the reason they did is because when I became president the first time, I changed the focus of the of the organization. I told them that <coughs> since the postal service gets most of its money, all of its money at the time, from the from the Congress, that we should be right there with the postal service uh, at the table with them, uh, talking to the congressmen because in every congressional district there, there, there were postmasters. And so what I did. 
I, I got uh, the organization to think more, more, more politically, to invite the congressmen into their office, to, to meet the people there, uh, and to let them know the work that the Postal Service did and, and how much help uh, the Congress uh, had given them over the years and how much help we needed. And so, uh, so that's what I did. And, and uh, then uh, there were another couple of presidents in between me, and the people felt we had to get back to that era where we started to get back to the political end of it again. And, and I think that that's, again, what the Postal Service really has to do. I think we have to get the, uh, the postmasters and postal employees to let the congressman know exactly how important the mail is. The people, even though with, uh, with the, the, all the electronic devices we have, people still like to get mail. They still like that opening the mail, <coughs> it's private, no one else can see it and so forth. And uh, I think we still have a, a place in the country. And uh, Remember the post office yeah. is mentioned in the Constitution yeah. several times. Right. Well, you know, uh, w what people fail to realize that, that in Lynn, uh, we've had a post office there since uh, 1763. And uh, uh, I, this dedication for me, I, 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 I take it not just for me. I, I take it for all the people who served uh, the, mail, the mail for the people in Lynn since 1763, 93. Uh, I, I feel that... Uh, this is, this is a dedication to them. This is what I'd like to have people remember. This is what I intend to say in my remarks uh, on Friday. Do you, that, that post office that's on Willow Street now, that was built, yeah. during, I assume, during the Great Depression. It, it, yeah, it was. It was one of the, one of the and, and the, the bureaus there, they, back when I was postmaster, uh, the federal government spent a lot of money to refurbish those those, those paintings there. Yeah, that's what made yeah. me think that yeah. it was a depression era project. Yeah, it was. It was. Part of the, the, the WPA project. was the arts. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And then before yeah. that, it was uh, where the uh, we used to call it the Leo Building, the, yes. the old post office. Yeah. Right. But in 1763, I don't know yeah. if you were around when yeah. that one was there, where it was. I remember it well. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 some, some people think I am. I, I've been there. Uh, but neither one of you guys know where it was. Yeah. Do you with the original post office in Linwood? No. Or? I don't Maybe. remember. That was 1913 to yeah. 33, yeah. I think, yeah. and then this one was 33. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's just. But it also, also always fascinated me is how fast the city of Lynn grew from that post office to the big one I between know. 1913 mm -hmm. and 1933. Right. I know. Those are great Those times. Those were. Um, we have the high point in Lynn's right. population yeah. and all that. It was. I, I just want to tell you one quick story about, I'm going to tell you a story about when you were president of the National Association of Postmasters, but early 80s, you were I was down in Washington with some training. Because if you remember, March of 1973, you hired me at the post office. There were a temporary job that 42 years later I retired from. But uh, and thank you for that. But I was down for some training, and you invited my wife and I for a National Postmasters Association function on Capitol Hill. It was held at the uh, Capitol Hyatt, I think, at the time. I was so impressed. You had congressmen, senators, staff people, judges. I was just amazed at the contacts you knew and the people that you, yeah. you had at that party. Right. Thanks for inviting me. I had a great time at it. <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago, but. So you were postmaster, what, 30 years, 31 years? 32 years. 32 years. Yeah. And because um, I, I can remember when you became postmaster, uh, I, I remember you, you were mayor, and then, right. as you said earlier, you, you resigned from right. mayor. And because yeah. I, 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 obviously, um, I, I, my grandfather worked for you, so I remember you <laughs> be, when you had to leave the mayor's office and become yeah. the postmaster. Right. And then it lasted. So you saw a lot of changes in the postal service. A lot of changes. Yeah, a lot of changes. Yeah, but 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 the problem the problem is that uh, that. Uh, you really have to keep reminding the members of the Congress that this is a public service that people really need, really, and uh, and they really depend on it. Okay? So, yeah, even today, it's how people get their yeah, prescription exactly. drugs and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is. But I want to tell you also uh, how many people 
have contacted me during all of this discussion about the dedication of your building. Um, that's, that's by now, by the time this is aired, it will have already happened. But I've had calls from retirees in California, in Florida, in Arizona, as I told you, Bob Grant's coming up from, from Florida for this. So uh, these people are very happy for you. They think it's a well-deserved honor for you. And you treated so many people well over the years in the Lynn Post Office. I know personally I learned a lot from you on how to, how to treat people how to manage people in the Tom Coston way, <laughs> not in the post office way, in the Tom Coston way. And uh, you're remembered by so many people over there. And see, the day you came from my retirement, who got the bigger round of applause, the district manager or Tom Coston? Tom Coston did. And what were you, third? On the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was third probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it but, is. Uh, people were happy to see you. Uh, were happy to see well, you back well, in that you know, building. You know, I, I, uh, what what I what I what I what I try to do was to put myself in the shoes of the individual individuals that I that I would have to speak to, uh, people who uh, had maybe had a few problems and so forth, and 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 and, and what I, what I try to do was to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. In other words, if if they made a mistake, let to see if we, they can. Uh, Correct it and 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 then, and then come back, and, and most of the times that that happens that, that it, it, it it had worked out, but there were so many people that I've, I've heard from all, all over the country. Even now, I'm getting letters. Of this, as you said, I'm getting letters from people and, and telling me things that I I I, I completely forgot about. Oh, well, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, you know, you know, it, it's it, life is compromised. It's it. it, it yeah, it's all compromise, and it, and that's one of the problems we have in our government today. People forget that our government was formed on compromise, and uh, what 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 happens is happening today. People are talking, but they're not listening, and uh, the only way that we're going to really survive is that we uh, have to listen to one another and uh, and try to make that make that compromise. That's, that, that's really so important. I think you said it very well in the first segment when you talked about how Ted Kennedy was able to compromise and yeah. Yeah. settle for half a loaf or even less yeah. than a half a right. loaf. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And uh, improve upon it later. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And and that, that's what we need. That's what we need in Washington today. We got to have that. I think yeah. talking to each other civilly is probably the step yeah. one. Yeah. Right. Instead well, of, you know. That in the in the in the poem that I that I wrote coming home from from Washington that that afternoon, one of the things I, that I, that I pointed out at the bottom of the poem was that uh, whether or not uh, we every every one of us uh, had any anything to do with uh, with the thing like the assassination of, of, of Jack Kennedy, and what I pointed out was that if anybody has any hate or hate in their heart and so forth uh, they they have they have had a had a part in this and I think that that's what we've got to really got to stay away from this idea of hate we can't have hate we can't have we, that's one thing we can't have we've got to we've got to try to work out uh, our differences and so forth and uh, that's the one thing that bothers me today I see too much hate uh, in the newspapers, too much hate on television, and uh, I think we got to get away from that. A perfect example of that yeah. is Pope John Paul II. Yeah. He actually went and visited his assassin. Yeah, exactly. Right, good yeah. point. Yeah. And yeah. forgave him. Right. So that leads yeah. us into, we have a picture up there, we're looking at you and the Pope, <laughs> I'm staring at it, so do you want to tell us about your visit? To well, you know, uh, yes, and the person I have to really, really thank for that is uh, uh, Ted Butchko. Mm -hmm. Ted Butchko was uh, was a was a uh, s state rep, and uh, he wanted to become postmaster. And so, uh, when I was a sectional center manager uh, here, I had to swear him in as a as a as, as a postmaster. And then he, after he had so many years of that, he went back and became state auditor again. Mm -hmm. And when when the pope. When the, when, when the Pope uh, came to the United States, he was representing 
the, 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 the pope who was in, in power. And he, when he came to the United States, the, the State Department called on Ted Butchko to travel with him across the country to, to be his interpreter. And so he became very friendly with this pope. And so uh, I, told, uh, I told Ted that we, my wife and I were going to, going to Whitley, and uh, if there's a possibility of uh, getting, getting to see the pope. And not only did he get us in to see the pope, he also had it so that we went to a private mass at 7.30 in the morning in the, uh, in the pope's private chapel. And when we got to the private chapel, the nuns, when they brought us in, the, 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 it was just plain benches. And then we noticed that the pope was up front, kneeling, saying his own prayers in front of the altar. And then when we, there were about 10 people there, there were, there were some, some, some priests, uh, and then they, they, they told us the ambassador from uh, France had, uh, was there with his wife, and he had a daughter who, uh, who was uh, 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 mentally retarded, and she was, she was with him. And uh, when we went up for communion, uh, the little girl uh, was, was with the father and mother in front of my wife and I, uh, at, at the, uh, uh, to get communion from the Pope. And when he saw her, he took his two hands, put them around her face, and gave her a kiss on the forehead. And uh, it, it really, really affected me because to think that the, the Holy Father would take time, you know, just to do this and so forth. And then afterwards, afterward, uh, after the Mass, the Pope stayed right at the altar and the nuns came in and took us out and went into, the, into his library, personal library. And then uh, we had some coffee and they had coffee cakes and so forth. But then the Pope came in himself and just walked around the room to the 10 people. And uh, uh, when he came to, to us, my wife, my wife said to him, and we, I, Ted Butchko was with us, uh, and my wife said to, uh, to, to him, uh, you know, Your Holiness, I want you to know, some people have said, that my husband looks like you. And he said, in broken English, he said, I would not wish that on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have pointed out, too, Ted Pushko was from Salem. But he was from Salem. Mm -hmm. Great, great guy. Yeah. And, but anyway, anyway, what the Pope gave us, he gave us each a, uh, a, a rosary, small rosary, which we have, which I still have today. But uh, that was one of, the, one of the great, greatest trips. Uh, and now he's a saint. Yeah. Mm. So I have my own saint I can, I can pray to. You got that You've got an in there too, huh? <laughs> what? You got an in there too. I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the one in I really want. <laughs> <laughs> of all the ins I've had, Joe. Well, you got to work those connections. You I know. know. <laughs> so, Tom, tell us about you were involved with the uh, development and the issuing of the JFK stamp. Was that correct? Well, well, well uh, the only way, the only way I, I was involved with is, is that uh, is that that since I was still on the, uh, they still had me on the postmaster general's board. Uh, I, I, they they told me that it was going to be done, and they wanted me to have a. In fact, I don't in one of the, I don't know whether you have the plaque here, but I brought the plaque that I got from from the the uh, 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 postmaster general. I don't think, I think it was around someplace we had it, and uh, but but that that was uh, that was a great day. Oh, he has it up, right? Yes, there, there it is, right there. Yeah, you have it right up, right yeah. in front of the post office. Yeah, it came right right from the postmaster general. Wow, beautiful. So stamps. I carried that home with me. Five cents, a long time ago. <laughs> you know, that's a beautiful picture. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he, he, he was a great guy. He was so down to earth, really. God. Yes, he was, and you know you've had a remarkable life. And, and he still owes me for 120 box lunches. <laughs> plus, plus Hennessy's fresh. Jack, yeah. Jack, when I see you, Jack, you better have that bread. <laughs> He's gonna, he owes you for those fraps at Hennessy's. <laughs> yeah, I'll never see that money. <laughs> I know. I know. So, Joe, what else are we missing? There's got to be more, Tom. What else do you want to talk about? The floor is yours. 
Well, you know, one of the one of the one of the things that that uh, that uh, I, I keep thinking of uh, is my uh, is my grandmother. She came from Ireland uh, as an eighteen year old girl. Her her uh, intended came over two years before. Got a job at the at one of the Morocco shops on, on Boston Street, and sent his money back to to bring her here. And the first thing they did when she got out the boat, he had already made all the arrangements with the for the priest and everything else. They got married. Okay, had ten children, five boys and five girls. Three of the boys were police officers. My father being one of them. And and, and but uh, I I I learned so much from her. She used to get up at five o'clock in the morning and put the tea on, and the tea would be there all day. So at night, when we're having it, you can walk over and be so strong. But <laughs> then they should make Irish bread or and so forth. But she was the one in, in in the neighborhood. If somebody was sick or somebody was disabled or, or something happened, she'd always give me a call and she called me brother. She said, "Brother, bring over your cart. You got a job you got to do." So she'd put the either the the, the meals or whatever I got to bring. And tell me where to go, and I, that'd be my job. What it re really, in thinking about it, uh, I, I've come to the conclusion that you're never too young to start helping people. You're never too young to start. And, and at my advanced stage right now, I, I've come to the conclusion you're never too old to start. And uh, that's been what I've tried to do all my life. Sometimes my wife gets very upset with me that all the phone calls I get, people looking for this or looking for that, or the letters I get, and I just tell her that if there's a possibility to just maybe helping someone, you know, I, I just, I think that's what we're here for. And you have yeah. certainly helped many, yeah. many, many yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard a number of stories over yeah. the years of going out of your way to help people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that really, if, if everybody had that same philosophy, what a different, what a different story we'd have today. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly would. Yeah. So that brings us, I guess, close to the end, Tom. W what would you like to say in closing? Well, um, you know, I am so I am so thankful for friendships like I have with you two people, and, and I have so many. That uh, that uh, I've been blessed. I really have been blessed. I I, I had I had two of the, two of the best wives. My my first wife was fantastic, and I thought that was going to be my end. And then when my two daughters and uh, my present wife's two daughters got together and and, and you know put us together, it uh, it was at a it, uh, for Christmas Christmas time dinner, and. Uh, what we used to do, uh, we, if we had any entertainment, we in the house we have a big staircase. We'd all sit on the staircase and we'd have the people who were entertaining. Like my son was uh, was with the singing group at, at Harvard, and when my my two daughters and her two, my present wife's two daughters got us together for that dinner, we went up on the steps and my son we brought the busload of the singers, and they were entertaining. And while we're sitting on the steps, my, my wife mentioned the fact that she had a she had a ski lodge, you know. And I said, gee, I love the ski. So she invited me to go skiing. And as I tell everybody now, she skied me right to the altar, you know. I, <laughs> and so I've had we have a, coming up on our 21st marriage sir, uh, anniversary next month. And I, as I was married to my my first wife for 44 and a half years. Wow. So. Very fortunate man. I'm very, I'm very fortunate. Two two wonderful women and uh, great 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 children and great uh, my other children from my second marriage. They're all fantastic and all the grandchildren. How many grandchildren do you? Uh, grandchildren, I got about uh, let's see, I think seventeen. Yeah. Mm. Truly remarkable right. story. Yeah. Great. And you have some very successful children have done very well yeah. and they were credit to their father. Yeah. Wow. By all means. No, no. Mother. Mother. <laughs> yeah. Mother. No way. Uh, yeah. Father helped a little. Yeah. Damn little, I tell you. Wow. <laughs> I, I went to school with 
So two of your children. Yeah, you did. Tom and Roanne. I know, Roanne. They're Pickering in English. I know. Yeah. yeah, and then he couldn't get away from us. He moved right next door to us. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's> incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, I, I said I've been in the, yeah I've been in these bushes before. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, this has certainly been a great story, and thank you for well, doing this with us. This, I, I'm just thrilled to be here. I mean, Tom's a, just a walking encyclopedia of history of Lynn. Certainly and, is. You know, the, as you put it, historical figure. He really, yeah. And that's why they name buildings after people like you, <laughs> right? And that's a long time coming, and you certainly deserve it. By the time people see this, it will be the Thomas B. Coston. Which I think is tremendous. Post office. Yeah. 32 years as postmaster. Yeah. Yeah. That has to be some type of wreck in Lynn, obviously. I would say. Yeah. It has to be. Unless that guy in 1763 lasted a long time. I, I don't <laughs> think so. so many people won. Yeah. Tom, I can't thank you enough for, for everything you've done for so many people for coming on the show and for sharing so much with Joe and myself. Yeah. Not only that, for caring as long and hard as you have for the city of Lynn and its well-being right. as mayor, counselor, and still today, you're all your efforts, you know, we all appreciate that. And I want you to know that this big award I'm getting is not my last hurrah. Happy to hear that. It's yeah. not my last hurrah. I'll be back. <laughs> I hope so. I will look. I will be back. Well, on that note, then, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for watching, and we hope you've enjoyed these three segments of a conversation with Tom Costin. My name is Richard Carpenter, co-host with Joe Scanlon, and of course, thank you to Tom Costin, a man like no other. <laughs> yes. And a man who has done so much for so many people, for the city of Lynn, for the United States of America. And it's a very suitable honor that the Lynn Post Office is now named the Thomas P. Costin Post Office. So thank you. Thank you again. Thank, thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you. Appreciate it. And with that, uh, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, thank you again, thank Joe you. and Tom.